Okay, so we've gone through and implemented a lot of React code in the React Kindling project, and I've added uh, Flux to the project. So I wanted to go through and talk a little bit about what Flux is, why we do it, and uh, a little bit about each of the individual pieces. And then throughout the rest of the week, we'll focus on each piece individually. But for right now, I just wanted to go over a quick overview so that everybody understands a little bit about the Flux architecture. So here's a diagram that you can find in the Facebook GitHub account. It, um, if you go find the, the Flux project underneath that account, you can find this diagram. And they talk a little bit about the background and why they've chosen to implement their architecture this way, but just really quick, here's kind of how it works. Uh, we're already used to React views. So that is the components that you build out that have the render method, they have different lifecycle methods, and that should be what everybody's kind of accustomed to writing at this point. The React views, and that's why I'm starting here, um, because it is a circle and you can pick anywhere to start in the circle. The React views uh, generate user actions. So those might be things like button clicks or the user typed in a text box. Some kind of user input occurs. Those user interactions then generate actions through action creators. So the action creators are the actual pieces of code um, that you'll find in the actions directory of the project. Those generate actions. And so the action actually has a type and a payload. So the type might be something like login. And then the payload might be the username and password for the user who's logging in. That information is then fed to the dispatcher. Now the purpose of the dispatcher is to control the flow of these actions so that you can ensure that they occur in the correct order. So for example, you might push a login button, which generates an asynchronous call out to the server, which then checks whether or not the user is logged in. In the meantime, you might also perform some other action, uh, say displaying um, a welcome screen, but you don't want the welcome screen to display before the login is completed. So the dispatcher has a wait for method that can ensure that your actions happen in order. Uh, your stores then are the other big piece of the Flux architecture. And a store is, every, it's not like a model like you're used to with say Backbone or even in Ruby on Rails. The store contains all of the data, all of the information for a slice of your application. So it's everything related to a specific domain. So everything about a user might live in a store or everything about a message if you were building a chat application might live in a store or if you were building a course management system maybe everything about courses would live in the store now the store is populated via the web api utils over here so the web api utils is a piece of code that helps you talk to your backend apis so that would be how you get data from uh, you know, say you wanted to load all the courses. So you call out to your API and say, show me all the courses for this user. Uh, the, the loading would occur by generating an action that calls the web API utils, which then returns, generates an action that hits the dispatcher, which will then feed that down to the store. And then the views register with the store so that they can receive uh, notifications that the store has changed. And then the views go to the store to get that data. Now I realize that sounds a little bit complicated um, and it's unfamiliar, but the implementation is actually relatively simple. So um, I'm gonna send out this, the link to the Facebook repository as well as a link to this uh, Flux Quick Start Guide. So they've done a really good job talking about um, each piece of the architecture. Uh, and you can run through this and, and get a, a quick overview. And then we'll talk about the individual pieces of the code, uh, the actions, the stores, etc. tomorrow, probably, but I'll, go, I'll give you a quick overview to show you just how simple it really is. So, um, close on this down. In the React Kindling project, 
underneath components, you're going to see this. Uh, we'll start with the register component. So the register component basically has a bunch of validations, and then it, it renders out a UI that shows a registration form. And then when the user submits that form, we handle the registration, which is this method inside of the register uh, component. And you'll notice that it calls out to the user actions and it calls register on there. So this component knows about the actions. So going back really quickly, that's this part. So we have our React view. It knows about the action creator, which is represented as user actions in our code. And so then it can say, hey, I need to register. Beyond that, it doesn't care about any other side effects. So it's quite possible that this registration form is going to need to disappear, or maybe it would change data. Maybe it would even show a loading bar or a please wait while we register you bar. But it doesn't make any changes to its state at this point. All it does is it calls out to the user actions and it says, register me. And then that action is going to traverse around that circle. And when it gets back to this component, this component will then check with the store to say, hey, what state do I need to be in? And it will register. It will change based on that, that new state from the, the store. That way, your data is always flowing in the circle. There's never um, a question about how the state changes. The component doesn't directly affect the state. Instead, it calls up an action, and then it lets somebody else deal with the problem. Um, and while I've got this screen up, just really quickly, one of the things to note about Flux is that it is not a framework, and it does not you don't download Flux and then get a whole bunch of code. Uh, basically, the only thing that is implemented for you is this dispatcher, and then you kind of implement everything else yourself. So you'll see that as we look at a little bit of these different pieces of code. So I'm going to go look at the user actions. So there's this actions folder and then user, and there's really not a lot here. There's the register method, and it receives the payload, which contains the, the username and the password for the user who's registering. Uh, I've abstracted away the actual functionality into this API because this is the point when we're going to call up to the server. And that um, we'll talk about more in depth later. But just know that this calls the server and generates an action saying, hey, this request to register the user is pending. And then when the asynchronous call returns, it generates another action which says the user registration is completed and then sends that on to the dispatcher. Um, okay, so just really quick, we have the dispatcher. It is really just two lines of code. So we import the dispatcher from Flux, and then we have it, and then we can use it. So going back, um, not in too much depth, because I don't want to talk about the API stuff just yet, but I just want to show you, you import the dispatcher, and then whenever you need to indicate that an action is happening, you can just dispatch that action onto the dispatcher. So you can tell the dispatcher, hey, this thing is happening. And then the dispatcher will take responsibility for passing that onto the stores. And that looks like this, just a few lines of code, nothing too complicated. Don't worry about the rest of the stuff in this file right now. Just know that the dispatcher can um, receive these actions from the action creators. All right. So again, the dispatcher, not much code here. But if we go look at the stores, so I have this user store. Uh, the stores are going to register a callback with the dispatcher right here. So whenever an action fires, the dispatcher will notify all the stores, and then the stores can choose which actions to respond to. The rest, they will just throw away. They're just going to return true and, and be done. So this store in particular cares about the login and the register, um, and that's it. So what happens is, is it says, okay, I received the register action. So that means that the payload is going to contain some predefined set of data, which it will then call its register method up here, which is not yet implemented. It just returns true. But what will happen is after this registration is completed, it's going to set up 
a current user, which then will become available to my views via this store. Um, and then when it's done, it calls this emit change. Now the reason it calls emit change is that each of the views can watch for those changes coming out of the stores. So then when the when a view, let's see if I've implemented Okay, we'll, we'll talk more about that later as well. But when a view receives a change event, it knows to go out to the store, get that new state, and then re-render. So now we've completed that life cycle. You've completed the circle. All right, so that's kind of a quick overview of Flux. I'll post these links. Are there any questions? Okay, if there's no questions, we'll look at implementation details tomorrow, starting probably with the views and how they subscribe to the stores.